Hello, everyone. So I'm going to talk about virtual reality a little bit. So I switched the title here into real, you know, measuring reality virtually. Uh, so probably you all have seen the ads for this uh, Fermin Car season, virtual reality. It's really here. It's really here again. That picture is from 1986. And that whole system cost only $2,000 and it was constructed at NASA to just prove a concept that we can really enter the virtual world uh, through simple devices. Um, well, we have come a long way. And in fact, in 1994, we had already advanced uh, that, you know, that quite a lot in virtual reality so that you could actually experience virtual reality in different locations uh, in arcades and things like that. So that's me trying out. Uh, an arcade game in 1994 that was called Tactile Nightmare from W Industries, but it looked like this. Uh, what you saw in those goggles was something like that. It was really like a black and white photograph with a lot of grainy stuff in it. So, okay, virtual reality was not quite there yet, even it has been here before. And how is it today? Well, it's advanced a lot. So this is the graphics from the wizard, um, the walls of the wizards from Alden Dynamics, which are actually former students of uh, Reykjavik University. Uh, these images just show you that this virtual reality is incredibly, incredibly convincing. And what can we do? What can we do with such a convincing virtual reality? We can do real carnage. We can really feel the gibbs, you know, coming at us with blood splatting out. Uh, this is one of the top selling virtual reality games right now. Uh, this is uh, Serious Sam. If you know that game, it's all about this. And unfortunately, this is sort of the, what a lot of people are looking for. But can we use this? Can we use the fact that this can be so effective to, uh, in creating some kind of emotion or reaction in us? And the proof is actually already out there that there is a project at University of Southern California which has used and is being using a virtual reality for post-traumatic stress disorder treatments. And it really builds on this idea that you can create a strong emotional reaction to what you're seeing and experiencing. So they put you back on the battlefield, literally in the vir oh, virtually, I should say. Mm -hmm. And then the person being exposed to it again and again can get over this horrible, uh, uh, well, basically this, this horrible uh, sickness, which is the PTSD. But one thing is that there, you have to do it under guidance. So there is an, uh, an expert that actually controls everything that happens to you. But the proof is out that they have published quite a lot about this. So we know that people can react to these things um, in real. And so we are building on this type of work uh, in, uh, in, in Cardia. We are building on this type of work using virtual reality to measure and look at real responses as if these virtual things were actually real. And we were looking at a project, we were looking at um, phobias with Decode, the genetics company. And the, the Decode is actually looking for like, what is, the, what is behind phobias? Can we actually tie it somehow to our genetics? Um, so what they needed to do is to find out who has a phobia for certain types of environments. So we helped them build a virtual uh, reality experience where they can put a lot of people into it and they can measure things like heart rates and actually physiological responses to the type of stimuli that we are controlling. And with this, this is an ongoing experiment and you can all participate if you haven't already. They set up here in the sun a couple of weeks ago, but now they're back at Decode um, here across the airport. So you can still participate in this. You don't have to have a phobia. They want to have, of course, a control group. So everyone can participate and get measured in how you react to these environments. I'm not supposed to show you environments that are actually using right now, but are you doing uh, the fear of heights right now and fear of spiders? And it's kind of interesting that you don't have to have a terribly realistic looking spider. People that have phobias for spiders will react, even to cartoon spiders. Um, so this is kind of interesting. Um, we are also, because my group, uh, Social Expressive Computing, we are doing virtual humans. And so by taking the virtual reality and marrying it with virtual humans, you can do all kinds of interesting things. And one area that we're interested in is social phobia. Can we actually put you into a virtual reality environment where you get really worried about all these people staring at you or walking through a group 
uh, how can you actually do it in virtual reality? And uh, one of our students, uh, Ragnar, did a, a bachelor's project this, this Christmas, built a number of different environments. And yeah, I think we're on the right track there. So uh, there's, it's kind of amazing how strong our reactions are to even the slightest uh, indication that there might be life uh, in, in the virtual world. Um, and finally, we are also uh, using virtual reality to measure what do you call the impact of the environment on your well-being. And the well-being that we are particularly interested in is your psychological well-being. I mean, how do you feel in different environments? And wouldn't it be amazing if we could actually measure the psychological impact of, say, urban planning or architecture before we start pouring concrete and actually making these things real? Uh, and that's what we're, the goal is. We can put people into a virtual environment, into different future versions of different streets, and measure how well uh, you kind of feel in, the, in those environments. And here is one thing that is very crucial when we're doing this. We have to calibrate the virtual reality uh, instrument. We have to know that it is actually doing something real. So what we are doing right now is that we're taking a real street and we have built it in virtual reality. So this is actually the first picture I'm showing of our own <laughs> virtual version of that street. Uh, we will soon be starting to putting to people into this virtual environment, but also putting people in the streets in this environment. And we'll, doing, we'll be doing all kinds of measurements, including physiological measurements uh, and cognitive measurements of those people going through these two different environments. And we are going to see correlations. Or we're, gonna, we're hoping to see correlations in our measurements. And that way, after this experiment, we hope to say for sure that we can now skip the real version and just take people into the virtual versions to see uh, how they react and how they respond. Uh, and then we will take this environment and we will extend it with future modifications. And we might give you two different versions of the future and then see which version of the future is better for you or better for us as human beings. So it's quite important that we do this work. I think in the future, this is going to be sort of like an, uh, what do you call it, an, an environmental survey uh, before you start construction. But now we can take the human factor uh, into this as well. So there are. Big challenges, and one of our challenges is locomotion. How do you walk around in these, uh, down the street? Because we are doing this in a little lab that is like three by three meters. Uh, well, some people have come up with amazing solutions to uh, locomotion virtual reality. Just keep, keep walking forever. Uh, we are not probably going to set, set this up here, but uh, something like this we need to do. Um, but, and also, lastly, there's still a lot of challenges. We're still in the early days, and we are still of a lot of cables. Uh, and it's quite dangerous um, if you have tried these things out. But of course, this will all be uh, solved uh, pretty soon enough. Uh, but for now, I know we're st really sticking with it because we are seeing results. We are seeing that the virtuality is good enough uh, to do real measurements. All right, thank you.